we're going to go over uh, the Smart But Scattered book um, by Peg Dawson. She um, was probably one of the first people that started talking and writing about executive functioning skills in a way that um, executive functioning has become a household term. I want to say probably like 20 years ago, we didn't even know what executive functioning skills were. At least we didn't call them executive functioning skills, right? So um, she has a whole series of books, Smart But Scattered. Um, we're going to dive into this one. This one is kind of like the original one. And as you can see, I have a tabbed it up and I use it quite often. So I'm going to share with you um, some of the things that I really like about this book and I think that you can benefit from it, okay? So first of all, I love the way this book is laid out. It's kind of laid out in three parts, right? The first thing is it does is it helps you figure out your kids, what I call executive functioning profile, right? So these are the different kinds of executive functionings and let's figure out what your kid is struggling with so we can really pinpoint and figure out how to help them, right? The way I do this in my practice is I help you figure out your executive functioning strengths profile so you get to know what your kid is really good at because kids that struggle with executive functioning skills need to be told reminded and so do their parents and their teachers what they are good at um, and then they also need to know that the reason that they struggle with a b c and d is because uh, their task initiation is really poor their working memory is really poor because then we're kind of separating it and not get caught in the trap where we label the the child or young adult as lazy or they're just not trying and all those things that don't help anybody. That's the first part they tackle into and I like it because she has a bunch of questionnaires so if you don't even know what to say or how to say it, um, this book kind of breaks it down for you and I think it has uh, questionnaires for you to figure out how to figure out what your child's strengths and weaknesses are. And I also challenge parents to figure out what your own strengths and weaknesses are, right? The second way this book is laid out, kind of like the second part, is they talk about um, the environment, right? How can we change the environment so that our kids that struggle with executive functioning skills can experience more success? And it doesn't mean we're just making everything easy for them. We're just kind of leveling out the playing field a bit, creating maybe a system or two that's going to help them. Because remember, we just figured out what their strengths are. Um, that's going to help them navigate their strengths and weaknesses, right? Kids with executive functioning skills are always messing up. And they're always screwing up. And they're always living in the, I'm just going to mess it up again. So we need to switch that as soon as possible and help them have more success. One of the things that they go into here in this book is um, in that second part is she talks about um, consequences, right? Um, so I am going to add that consequences isn't like traditionally how we think about it. Like, oh, well, you know, they're going to learn how to do that. They're going to figure that out. You know, if they keep on making the same mistake, they'll get it and they'll figure it out because honestly, Kids, most kids that struggle and most adults and most young adults and teenagers that struggle with executive functioning skills, you will see them make the same mistake over and over and over again. So that natural consequences, they'll figure it out, doesn't usually apply to the kids with executive functioning skills. And that's actually kind of like a marker where you can see they really are struggling with executive functioning skills because they just don't get it like the rest of the kids get it. So it's interesting that it's consequences here, but that's not what she's referring to um, when you see that in the book. And the last part is she actually dives into each skill and breaks it down for you in very easy language as to how you can address these skills and improve them within your own classroom with your own family dynamics um, so that you can help. So this book is a wealth of information, but it's very digestible. It's very um, easy to use, but it's very um, 
you know, it has a very good foundation and it's based on all of her research that she's done. So I highly recommend this book. Um, a piece in this book goes into, okay, like, well, what if you've tried this and it didn't work? What if you learned about this and you, you don't want to do it? You want somebody else to do it. Um, you know, when you can decide if you want to get a professional, you want to have somebody like me that can help you with executive functioning coaching. And that coaching can be um, me helping you as the parent help your own child. Sometimes it's me working directly with the child and the parent. I usually prefer to have the parents involved. Um, that's just my own personal preference. Um, some coaching strategies don't really involve the parents. So it just kind of depends. But know that this is a great place to start with. And if you need more support, that's what an executive functioning coach can help you with. I happen to be an occupational therapist that works specifically with executive functioning. Um, so you get a little bit extra. Um, so feel free to reach out. Let me know if you have used this book. Let me know if you love it as much as I do. And of course, feel free to reach out to me if you want any extra help. Um, I will be happy to do so. All right, friends. Thanks so much.